All right, good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank you all for joining us today. It's my pleasure to be joined by representatives of Cook County Health, the Chicago Medical Society, and the Illinois Restaurant Association. So let me begin with acknowledgments. Israel Rocha, CEO of Cook County Health. Sam Toya, president of the Illinois Restaurant Association. And then we have several representatives of the Chicago Medical Society. Dr. Vishnu Chandi, who's chair of the Chicago Medical Society's COVID-19 committee, will be speaking. We also have with us Tariq Butt, who's president of the Chicago Medical Society, and Ted, Ted Kanalikas, who's CEO. Um, Ernestino Roldan, called Tino, is a worker at the East Bank Club, and he's going to speak. Thank you, Tino. And our ALS interpreter, our sign language interpreter, is Mark Motika. Restaurant workers are among the essential heroes who kept us going during the pandemic. Their efforts were critical over the past year, providing sustenance after a long day, delicious food when we needed a break from our own kitchens, and a respite from the anxiety we all felt and continue to feel. Restaurant staff people worked tirelessly, even as they were asked to pivot to new roles to meet new demands. Even as hours were cut, doors were closed, and their own li livelihoods were in jeopardy, our restaurant workers have stood up to the challenges facing their industry. According to a recent poll, more than 60% of the people returning to a restaurant say returning to a restaurant is one of the most important things they look forward to as COVID-19 restrictions ease. Now we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel and people are returning to our cafes and restaurants for a sense of normal, normalcy and camaraderie that we all have craved. Uh, but we're not out of this yet and clearly risks remain. We're still seeing new cases. This is not a time to let our guard down. We must ensure that the unsung heroes, those who have been there for us all the way through this, are protected against COVID too. That's why Cook County Health will be recognizing this coming Monday, May 3rd, as Restaurant Day at all of its mass vaccination sites, and we have six. As Mr. Rocha will explain in a moment, you are welcome to make an appointment on our website, vaccine.cookcountyil.gov, or simply walk up to a site during open hours. No matter which path you choose or which side of the county you live on, we have room for you. It's imperative, it's imperative that we work together to get all residents of Cook County who are eligible vaccinated against COVID-19. We have to do our part to protect ourselves, our family, our friends, our communities, everyone around us, particularly those who are the most vulnerable. Now, I'd like to ask Israel to come up and say a few words. Thank you so much, uh, Madam President Perkwinkle, and for everyone here for joining us today. Uh, as, as the President said, my name is Israel Rocha, and I'm President and CEO of Cook County Health. We are here to highlight uh, May 3rd and every Monday in May as Restaurant Worker Days at our mass vaccine sites. Restaurant staff are among the most essential workers that have helped keep our society going during the pandemic and helped make sure that we, stay, that we had food and nutrition during these difficult times. Restaurant staff are continuing to work diligently day in and day out to provide their customers exceptional food and exceptional experience. As a health system, we know all too well of being, essential, uh, being part of an essential workforce. We want to recognize the hard work of the restaurant staff across Cook County, from our chefs to our cooks to our dishwashers, our servers, our hosts, and everyone else who makes sure that we have operations, access to restaurants, and nutritional sustenance. We are proud to be partnering with the Illinois Restaurant Association and the Chicago Medical Society to raise awareness about how restaurant staff can get vaccinated. We want to be sure that every essential worker knows how they can get vaccinated and encourage them to do so. It is our hope that restaurant staff who have not been vaccinated yet will take the opportunity on May 3rd to do so at one of our mass vaccine sites or any day for that matter. We are here and we welcome you. Cook County Health operates six mass vaccine sites across the county and vaccinate up to 14,000 people each day. 
In all, we have administered more than 650,000 COVID vaccinations directly at these centers. We have expanded access at all our sites to accommodate walk-ins and are offering later hours at our site in Matheson to 7 p.m. to give people a chance to get vaccinated after business hours. About half of all eligible Cook County residents have received at least their first dose of vaccine. But together, we still have a lot of work to do. We are now seeing a plateau in demand for vaccinations. We projected that this would occur when we reached around 50% of our eligible population being vaccinated. We're there today. Most individuals who absolutely knew ahead that they wanted the shot have, at the onset have had the chance to get one. Now we have to change hearts and minds to encourage individuals who have not yet made the decision to get vaccinated to get the facts, to get educated, to learn more about the process, and hopefully make that decision to vaccinate themselves and encourage their loved ones to follow their example. This will be an uphill climb, but we are committed to doing everything we can to get people vaccinated and remove barriers to access. The COVID vaccine offers an easy, safe way to protect yourself and your loved ones from serious illness uh, and death. We hope that everyone, including the essential workers who keep our country running, will get their vaccine. So at the very end, we want to make sure that everyone knows now it's easy. Go to our website, come into our sites, and almost go to any location where you know that vaccine is being offered and you can get one. There really is no requirement other than your willingness and your decision to get vaccinated. So we invite everyone to join us in our effort to safeguard Cook County, to help our restaurant workers, help our essential workers, and get our, our county back to where we used to be before COVID by starting by taking the COVID vaccine. So we all have a part to do. Let's do our part. If you've been vaccinated, pick up the phone, call your friends and family. If you haven't, get online, get the facts, learn the information, and hopefully make the decision to join us in getting vaccinated. Thank you so much, Madam President. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, my name is Sam Toy, President and CEO of the Illinois Restaurant Association. The Illinois Restaurant Association is honored to partner with Cook County and the Chicago Medical Society on this vaccination initiative for restaurant and hospitality workers. We ask all operators and employees to do everything they can to keep themselves and diners safe. That's the most important thing. And vaccines are a critical part of that. I'd like to recognize President Preckwinkle and thank her and everyone at Cook County for being steadfast supporters of our industry over the last 13 months. The county has been working to offer financial relief and assistance to, on every step of the way through the Community Recovery Initiative, uh, rental assistance programs for residents, very important, and deferred taxes for business, super important, and much, much more. Last March, the restaurant and hospitality industry in Cook County and across Illinois has been decimated by the pandemic. We estimate that over 20% of the restaurants here in the state of Illinois will not reopen. That's over 5,000 restaurants. Through March, over 100,000 jobs have been lost in the Illinois food service industry. We were the first industry to be shut down and probably will be one of the last industry to truly reopen and recover. Vaccinations are absolutely cru crucial to help drive our COVID numbers back down and turn get our guests back in restaurants. We need to get diners back in seats and events opened as well. We just took another step in the right direction today that allows restaurants to have up to 100 people in one room, which is excellent news. I encourage all food service operators and employees to take advantage of these ongoing opportunities for vaccinations at convenient locations throughout the county. Again, I want to thank President Preckwinkle. Let's all work together to protect our businesses and communities and stay on a steady path to reopening and recovering because we are the culinary capital of the United States and we're going to stay that way. Thank you. Thank you, President Preckwinkle, as well as uh, Israel for partnering with the Chicago Medical Society and working with the restaurants. The restaurants are a key component of our society. Uh, as a practicing infectious disease doctor, we've seen this pandemic now for 15 months, and it's 
time to bring it to a close and vaccinations, social distancing and masking as we've been saying are the key to this. Uh, partnering with vulnerable populations are, is one of the cornerstones and I'd really like to thank Cook County Health for recognizing and giving as much access for people to get vaccinations. We've done the easy part, believe it or not, because the first 50% are the eager beavers who want to get vaccinated. The next 30, 40% that we're going to be convinced are going to require the partnerships between the health departments, the physicians, nurses, and all points of access. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for participating in this, and uh, let's get this done. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Ernestino Roldan. Uh, I'm here. Ernestino, you can take your mask off. Otherwise, you won't understand. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Ernestino Roldan. I work for East Bank Club. I've been there for 29 years, and I, I'm here to encourage everybody, food and, uh, food and beverage employees, get the vaccine. It is very important. And we have nothing to lose. I got my, my two shots already. My family got two shots, and uh, we have no symptoms at all. So please do it. Thank you. Thank you, Ernestino. All right. All right, so the question is, what is the county and the restaurant association um, going to do to get people uh, to come to our sites on the 3rd of May? Well, the first thing we're doing is publicizing it and asking um, all who, who see or hear of this initiative to tell uh, everyone in the restaurant industry to uh, make themselves, uh, to come to the sites that are available to them and, and get vaccinated. Now, um, Sam, do you want to add anything to that? So as President uh, Prockwinkle just said, we are <clears throat> all over social media uh, making sure we're getting this out to all our members from Wheeling to Calumet City to Cicero to Homewood and throughout uh, all of Cook County. It's very important. Uh, so we're communicating with our members on social media through our newsletter because it's communication is the key to success and that's what we're doing here right now is communicating to get our workers to get the vaccine because it's very important because safety is number one. So we're going to communicate and hopefully you'll communicate this in your column. So thank you. Sorry, hold on one second. This is, is we're just, just adding one item real quickly, or a few items to that. So as we talked about, we will be doing um, partly, the biggest part is education. So we talked about that before, this was a campaign of access. And really, the race was to see how many access points we could provide to individuals who wanted to get the vaccine and had made that decision for themselves and for their family. What you're going to start hearing now is more concentrated efforts because it's now a campaign of advocacy and access. We actually have to provide information. We have to be able to be there to provide support. We have to be able to answer questions and to be there with our teams to make sure that our communities understand why this is important, what they're facing, and answer any questions that, that are causing fear or hesitation against the vaccine. So I want to make sure one of the biggest difference, and we're going to have many more days like this. And to answer your question, we will work with organizations that need transportation. We have programs that we've been working on, and we'll work individually with those organizations, whether they be restaurants or other types of events that we're going to have, to make sure people can get there. But the big difference that we're here to talk about today and with today's example is how we can coordinate with employers and others and different organizations throughout the county to not only provide access, which was, again, we said the 50%, and you heard the Chicago Medical Society say that was probably the easier part, and it was, because that was a campaign of access. And your questions were about how much vaccine, how many doses, where are we giving them? 
and we met that challenge. The new challenge going forward is that we have to do in that, which is continue to provide access, but we also have to provide advocacy. We have to provide education, and we have to be concentrated in our efforts to make sure that people are getting the education and understand the urgency that we need to make those decisions as quickly as we can to safeguard our families. So in short answer, it's education, access, and assistance that prevent any barriers, whether they be transportation or other. We will be working with the different organizations to help bridge those gaps. Pardon me? Oh, so there are two questions. One is, um, what about the restrictions that are going into effect tomorrow? And then supposedly there's a further easing of restrictions two weeks from now. So uh, what I can say is that our, the Cook County Department of Public Health will issue new mitigation guidelines um, uh, actually over the very shortly or not have already been released, they will indicate that we are in lockstep with the city of Chicago and they can be found on the Cook County Department of Public Health. These guidelines are very similar to Chicago and those that were being advocated from the CDC to make sure that as we're having two factors that are happening, we have individuals who again need to be vaccinated and we're concerned about their benefit, but we also have individuals that have been vaccinated and we're learning more uh, about what it means to be vaccinated and the precautions and activities that you can take and that governance is coming from the CDC and our public health uh, our public health agencies across the country and we're making sure that we respond to both simultaneously so those mitigations will be posted on our Cook County Department of Public Health site and you'll find that they're uh, they're in lockstep with the city of Chicago and mirroring what is happening around the country of cities and communities of similar size. The next step in two weeks what can you tell us about that? You know, I think that we're all looking day by day. And so what I would say is that we anticipate, again, that there'll be some more advice and counsel that will be coming from the Centers for Disease Control, as well as uh, the city and other communities. We just continue to monitor. So I don't want to foreshadow anything and then have to correct any indications that we have. Really what it is is, is that we follow the guidance and then we evaluate to make sure that everyone's staying safe. We look at, at what's happening across the country and we take actions from there. And so I would say in two weeks is really our, our statement saying that we're going to publicly monitor where we're at and we hope that what we're doing is following the right course and that the the guidance given by the CDC and and their testing is is working and then we'll continue to monitor to make some other modifications to those guidance so I don't want to give more than we can other than to just say that in two weeks we're going to be evaluating from here to there and we hope slowly every day to be making it a little easier uh, for us to return back to where we were before COVID because more people are getting vaccinated and more people are taking action and what I would say the one thing that I know will be true. The more people get vaccinated, the more that we will be able to do. So if there's one thing we can take from today, please get vaccinated if we want to make sure we have more restrictions coming forward. Lift it. Yes, but we're not taking off-topic questions now, so you have to wait. Next. Sure. So I belong in the person of color and um, senior citizen category. I've had both my shots. After the first one, I had a little pain in my arm. After the second one, after 24 hours, um, I started feeling a little nauseous and I had a headache, which lasted about three hours. Actually, um, um, it's been suggested to me that seniors are less likely to have more problematic reactions than younger people to the shots, partly because we've been exposed over the course of our lifetime to more viruses and also had more vaccines. Um, so actually the people who, in my office anyway, who've, who've struggled the most with um, 
with being sick afterwards were the younger ones. So I encourage everyone to get their shot, young or old. Um, the only way we can protect the people, if you, don't, if you don't care about yourself, if you think you're invincible, please understand that your parents and your grandparents are not, and um, get your shot. So I encourage everybody to get their shots. This is whom? I'm sorry. This is this is Marty Pike from the Daily Show. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, I just wanted to say to you the the latest IDPA stand up show that you know for the second day in a row the seven day average for um, no vaccinated and ten of boosters was below bound. So I just wondered if one of the medical experts could address that. You know we've been you know we were getting up towards an average of 150. All right, so the question is, the seven-day average for vaccinations is below 100,000. Do we have any comments on that? Go ahead. Yes, Dr. Chundi. Yeah, I think there are several factors. One is the J&J being off uh, line for now. The second is what we're, I think, is the really hard aspect of it. Uh, which is hesitancy, and, and much more than hesitancy, it's just people want the easiest way to get vaccine. Um, people want to be able to go, as, when they go for a regular checkup, and get a vaccine. And I think this is the first step in moving forward to that next process where it becomes a routine vaccination. We don't have press conferences about getting vaccination. It just becomes a routine thing, and it becomes a normal part of life. We're in that red zone of football game and we don't want to double doink off of the <laughs> <laughs> off of our <laughs> football here so we got to push this through and this is going to be hard this is not going to be easy so I got to congratulate everyone in the room because this is the right step as a practicing physician yesterday in our offices when we're giving vaccine each patient a lot of the patients took 20 30 minutes of questions to get them to get the vaccine but almost everybody took the vaccine so they want that and I got to thank Dr. Um, uh, Israel as well as uh, um, uh, Madam President here for moving forward in the correct direction. So thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Marty? Anything else, Marty? No, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Alex had an off-topic question. Sure. So almost 30 years ago, Alderman Madeline Haithcock, who was the alderman of the second ward at the time, and myself, proposed uh, renaming Lakeshore Drive, basically the southern portion of uh, Lakeshore Drive, down to, down to downtown, uh, after DuSable. I thought it was a good idea then. I still think it's a good idea. 